<laughs> right. Um, I think we better kick off. Usual introduction. Introduce yourself and the company. Uh, hello, I'm Jamie Levy, President and CEO of uh, Generation Mining, and thanks for uh, listening to my presentation. Or what are we going to talk about? What do you? What would you like to talk about last night? Well, give us a summary of the company, and then we can, I can get into it. Um, last night, definitely not. Definitely not. Okay. Yeah. Um, Generation Mining, I, similar, I was just hearing Fireweed, I think they began around 2019, same as us. Um, this was a spin out of a company which uh, Bob Wares, the earlier uh, was talking about, we had a zinc project in the Northwest Territories called Pine Point, we sold it to Cisco Metals. Um, we got a spin out of that company, we were looking for um, a different asset mix of commodity mix from, from lead and zinc. So we chose to look for some palladium projects. Mm -hmm. We came across um, this project that Savanier had. So we reached out to Savanier. We closed the acquisition in 2019. Um, after that, we did an updated resource report. We put out a quick PEA because there had been two feasibility studies completed earlier. Then we put out a feasibility study in 2021. Uh, we just updated that feasibility study technical report in 2023. Um, so we've done a fair amount on the technical side. We uh, resumed the environmental assessment process that the Stillwater and Sabanier was in. We got that approved by the federal and provincial governments. Sorry, I'm babbling here. Um, we got that approved in November, of, uh, November 30th, 2022. Um, uh, we did do some, uh, we completed a um, CBA communities benefit agreement with our First Nation partner, Bidigan Nishnabeg. We've already done phase one of our financing. We have arranged $240 million with Wheaton. Uh, we just announced a couple of weeks ago that we um, have arranged a syndicate of uh, banks of $400 million US. So it's been a busy almost four so, years I've coming up. Busy. Yeah. It's been busy. Do you know, in a certain light, you look like Bradley Cooper. You know that? I'm sorry. Anyone? Anyone? No. Bradley Cooper. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Um, you want... Let's let's talk, let's talk about the the money side because I'm. What, I guess the problem I'm trying to address here is that there's a seems to be a massive disconnect between what the market's valuing you at, the stage you're at, and what your economic study says you should you should be doing. Right. I'm trying to work out the why. Okay. You, you with with the Wheaton facility, two hundred was two hundred forty million. You've drawn yep. down what 40, 40 now? Forty million. Right. Okay. So they understand what you're doing. Yes. You've got a consortium of, with this credit facility as well. 400 million? 400 million US. Okay. Let's remind people of your market cap. Uh, under 100 million. Okay. Right. So you, there's a slight disconnect. Most I see a light? one here. Okay. Tell, tell me what's tell me that story. But I'm, I'm trying to work out for you. Is this something that you've not done? Is this something that you've done? Or is there a misconception in the marketplace? What do you put it down to? Well, I think another metric you can look at, the, our feasibility study had a, a, our net present value at 6% of, of just over $1.1 billion. So right. that's trading at less than 10% of our net present value. So I think that is the biggest discount we're trading at relative to, you know, we, we uh, stream the gold and 22% of the platinum, which is less than 5% of our revenue for $240 million. Did so you pick the wrong metal. And palladium, I don't think so. I mean, palladium has sold off a little bit recently. I think with the crisis in Ukraine, um, now they're selling it to China for cheaper. They never got sanctioned, so palladium's not performing all that well. But we do have a very nice—I don't like to call it a byproduct, a co-product, a copper. Um, it is a copper project uh, with a palladium credit, just by size, but by price, it's obviously a palladium project with a copper credit. So mm -hmm. we're doing over 41 million pounds of copper a year. So okay. it's a substantial amount of palladium. Palladium, we're doing 163,000, or we will be producing 163,000 ounces of uh, palladium a year. So, I mean, on a gold equivalent, we're almost at 285,000 ounces of gold. So it's a big, big project. It's a big project, but it's not gold. It's um, not gold. So people don't understand palladium. Yes. But clearly there's a market for it. Um, and clearly your backers un understand that. Also, the the, the financial um, groups um, that have kind of understood what you, understood your story and, and bought into it and understand that. But what are people missing about the palladium market? Why is because it's been fairly erratic in the past uh, as uh, in, in terms of pricing, and companies trying to insert themselves into that have you know fallen over. So why is why is now the right time for palladium? 
Well, Palladium had a little run up um, uh, just before or just after Russia went into Ukraine. It went through three thousand dollars an ounce. Now it's trading, I think, around fifteen hundred dollars an ounce. So it it has sold off. Um, copper is performing quite well. I think at three ninety now. Um, Palladium is it's an industrial commodity. It's used in your catalytic converter for an internal combustion car. I think there's a belief that we're all going electric cars. Um, in a couple of years. I don't think that's going to happen. And if it does happen, copper is going to shoot through the roof. So it's nice to have that polymetallic deposit that we kind of have some relationship. If palladium does fall because of um, everyone has an electric car, copper has got to go to seven, eight dollars and then we'll be a, for sure a copper project. But I mean, the natural transition that we see in the China news is that uh, plug in hybrids are outselling battery electric vehicles. Um, and, you know, there's increasing loadings in, in China right now, in Europe right now. So they really want to get rid of um, the, the toxic emissions. So and the loadings have increased. So it's going to demand more and more palladium. And as a plug in hybrid, you require more palladium than a straight car does. So I, I think that palladium is going to be here for a long time. And if it's not getting used in an internal combustion car, there's other usages like pharmacy, pharmaceutical. But the big usages is in uh, the processing side. Uh, there's a report that I read the other day um, for AI, you need to have a very strong motherboard or processing power and the Palladium acts as a, as a catalyst that can cool it down so you could run whatever you want. Uh, but what, what are the numbers on all of that? Because it's, it's well and good describing the, the use cases, but if the numbers aren't there, or you can't sell, you can't sell at the price that you want into this market because you, you'll be a big producer, right? Well, well not that big. I mean, we'd be producing 163,000 ounces a year. Uh, the market is, uh, the demand is about, 10 to 11 million ounces a year. 7 million is coming from supply, from mine production. The other differences come from uh, recycles. And I mean, it's been in a deficit for seven or eight years now. Um, a lot of that was the stockpiles from the rails. They have no more stockpiles. The supply side is a mess right now. Um, the majority of the palladium is coming from Russia and South Africa. South Africa, as we all know, ESCOM's got some power shortages. Um, so those projects are at risk of not um, uh, producing as much as they anticipate. And Russia, they were supposed to do a very large expansion at Norilsk, and that got shut down with the crisis because they can't import anything right now. So I think the demand is going to keep increasing. I think the supply is going to um, uh, be falling, and I think we're going to fit in pretty nice, and it's not we're not going to affect the market. Right. Well, it'd be interesting to see how they're going to the Russia situation yes. and, and where metals flow east or west. Um, probably not one for now. Just just back on the money side of things, right? So you got some, you know, two forty and uh, four hundred. Great. You've also got off take. Yes. With Glencore plus one other. Um, it's uh, they don't want to be named, but it's a smelter in Europe. Right. Okay. So how do those contracts get formed? I mean, because. Given the discussion we're having around potential failure around uh, price, three thousand two years ago, fifteen hundred now. How do you ensure you, your revenues going forward? Well, I mean, I mean, you're selling it to the smelter at that price that well, it's at that time. What, what is what does the agreement look like? The, well, the agreement it's in our feasibility study, but it would be. 97% payable or 90% right. payable, then there's a deduct of so many grams. Right. So it'd be two, three gram deduct that you would have off of that. So I guess it depends on the price. So And what, what percentage is off, have you um, guaranteed with this offtake? So 50% is going to okay. Glencore and the other 50% is going to okay. overseas. So um, we- For how long? Life of mine, or we can shut it off whenever we want. Okay. After a certain point in time. Do you think people don't know that or something? Is that is that because I'm again coming back to the original point is I don't understand the disconnect between NPB, what the market's valuing at now. Is it something to do with your share register and buying? I mean, what do you so I, I, I think that there is the palladium market that I, th I think people don't understand. Um, and I think that there's um a single asset single asset development risk that some funds are a little skeptical skeptical about um you know there were some issues at cote lake and magino just south of us so um, we're learning from the mistakes that they made and we're looking at a project just north of us greenstone that hard rock um sorry that equinox is working um with orion and we're looking at the successes that they have on that project so i think that that's part of it and i think with the 
um, for the past year when we were trying to um, get our new capital number and we came up with a 26% increase in our CapEx, um, that we do have a bit of a funding gap. So that funding gap hopefully will get resolved um, later on this, um, this summer, early fall. And then we could tell the people or investors that we're fully funded. Uh, and I think a lot of people are waiting for that opportunity to be fully funded before. And that would be an equity requirement. It would be equity or equity like. And we're trying to go equity like so it's non dilutive to the shareholders. Right. We've we heard a lot of conversations around alternative financing during yeah. this conference. So, what were the options available? Um, the, the federal government of Canada, uh, bless you, um, the federal government of Canada has um, mandated uh, in their last budget $3.8 billion for critical metal projects. Um, some of that is going to the processing side through this fund called Strategic Innovation Fund. Um, and the other um, fund is called Canada Infrastructure Bank. Mm -hmm. They just put a press release out last week that they're looking at mining projects, mining projects, and they're looking for a minimum investment size of $100 million. So we're going to try to potentially tap into one of those to fund, um, to bridge the gap. Okay. Uh, then there's prepays um, that you could do with private equities. There's partnerships that we could look with private equities, um, companies, or other strategic investors as well. Okay. okay. Um, any other long poles in the towns like uh, EA, EIS? Um, so we got our EA or EIS on so November 30th. So now we're applying for the provincial permits. Okay. And, um, you know, Quebec is if not the most money friendly uh, province in Canada, Ontario was really picking up their game right now. I have the ability to talk to ministers right now, Minister Peary, Minister Buccini, Minister Rickford, they're all pro mining. The Ford government is supporting critical metals. And if we're running into any roadblocks with the permits, the, the, the ministers are helping out with their chief of staffs, with their policy folks to make sure this gets resolved. I mean, if they want the ring of fire to be success, this generation marathon project will have to be a success first. We got agreements with First Nations. We got um, government support, federal support. So I believe we're going to be fully uh, permitted to, from the province for to start a construction by the end of this year. Okay. Again, to come back to the, kind of the share register and also in terms of offtake agreements. So if, again, another conversation um, being talked about during this conference, like North American critical minerals lists. Where did you consider you, you know? Pure North American partners um, rather than European smelters. Do you think it would have helped at all? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I, the the Horn smelter, Glencore. A lot of people are skeptical about them to begin with, but our risk profile to have all of our um, uh, material to go to one smelter. One smelter risk is, is something that you have to consider. Yeah. And sending it overseas to a European smelter, there is other benefits that they provide as well with loan guarantees for senior yeah. lenders, um, certain working capital facilities, certain payables are a little bit better than other smelters. So there's a reason why we did it this way. And I think it makes the most sense. And at the end of the day is, I mean, you know, Europe is friendly with North America. So we don't, in Canada, we don't manufacture, uh, so we don't refine PGMs anyway. So it's got to go over to the U.S. or over to um, you, uh, Johnson Math, your European right. And you, and you talk about it in the presentation um, phrase. I we're undervalued due to the phase we're at. So we're talking the Lassonde curve, boring phase that you're yes. in, and the up the timing for when you think this uplift recognition will be what. Um, I think when we're fully funded and permitting, and I think when. The, um, the sediment in the market gets better. I mean, this is a, a crowded room right now and the sediment I think in the, the retail market isn't the best right now. So I think once the sediment gets better, we're fully funded with all our permits ready to go, then we'll get re-rated. I mean, analysts that we've talked to this week have been saying we should be trading 50 or 60% 60, 60 of our net present value. So that's a five, $600 million valuation and we're trading at a hundred million dollar market cap. So we do have some room to go. So we do have to do some work. Um, and, you know, we want to build this project. We want to get this thing built for, for, you know, Ontario, Canada, um, and the world. A good buying opportunity, eh? Yeah, I okay. so. I'm buying right now. Okay, so. well, thanks very much. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.